Well guys, we're back at it with another stack of reader questions. Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Wasn't too long ago, I answered a handful of questions, but I've got a lot more. So we're back at it today to answer some of your uh, viewer questions. And we're gonna start off with this one right here from Dustin Wickham. And he says, uh, Hi guys, had a question. I have an 05 RSX 5-speed in my Civic Coupe. I'm curious if there are any options to get the speed sensor to work with my Speedo. Okay, when he says Civic Coupe, Things that make you go, hmm. stating he has a Civic Coupe could mean any number of cars there. It could be 92 all the way up through uh, 2005. Those were the years of the two doors. Um, for this type of problem, but they all have the same solution. So what's happening is the 05 RSX five-speed transmission has a uh, countershaft speed sensor as opposed to a vehicle speed sensor. So what winds up happening is the count for the pulses that run the speedometer are coming off of third gear as opposed to off the differential. What that means is it's pulsing significantly faster than it would off the differential. There are a bunch of solutions for doing that. Uh, probably the easiest ones are some devices I believe made by Hybrid Racing and K-Tuned. And basically it's, uh, I believe, four-wire operation. You get a power and a ground. You have the signal coming in, a signal going out. And that basically uh, changes uh, the high rate of pulses to low rate of pulses. And it's, uh, I'm not sure if these things are adjustable. Uh, but they should do a pretty good job of, of knocking it down to where it would be for an RSX with a, a vehicle speed sensor rather than a countershaft speed sensor. So it should, should do most of the job. If you're looking for something a little more adjustable, then I would look into maybe a Dakota Digital Universal Speedometer Interface. Those are a little bit more sophisticated, but they have, they have a lot more adjustability. Uh, so you can actually fine tune it to the actual speed you want. A Speedo Healer is another company that makes one. So those are another couple of options as well. That should solve your problem. By the way, if you have a K-Pro and it was manufactured, uh, or I'm sorry, and the K-Pro was installed by Honda, and it's at least uh, whatever the current uh, uh, version is, version four, series four, uh, that actually has a speedometer output. It's not something that Honda publicizes. This is a secret. Do you understand me? But we actually did a video on that, and you can find uh, the video, um, a link to it down in the show notes. Um, but basically what we did was uh, uh, wind up taking the vehicle speed as it comes off the engine and uh, inputting it to the ECU normally. Then there's a selection inside the computer for selecting the high frequency pulse. And then uh, I believe B11, the pen on B11, actually has an output that you can activate. Uh, and then you can put in a value to drop the... Um, uh, drop the speed signal down. Uh, I encourage you to go take a look at that video and uh, see if that works out for you. Uh, next question here. This is uh, in regards to uh, an EP3 engine swap. It says, hi, Brian. First off, thank you for the knowledge you shared with all of us on Honda Swap. That's what we're here for. Here's my situation. I have a 2002 stock EP3 SI K2083 with 280,000 miles. Just recently did a valve job and found that my intake cam lobe is heavily pitted at cylinder two. I've decided to move forward with doing a swap given the high mileage and cost to fix. I've decided on a K24A or K20A swap for more power, but I'm not sure how that will affect my EP3 passing California emissions tests. I have done some research for both swaps and have seen conflicting answers and wish you could shed some light on these swaps and passing emissions. I plan on uh, doing either of the following. K24A route, uh, number one, purchase a low-mile JDM K24A with six-speed TSX transmission. Uh, number two is utilize my EP3 wire harness and repin it for reverse lockout. Number three, uh, purchase a TS TSX ECU for manual transmission with matching key immobilizer and key. Uh, number four, upgrading wheel hub for 36 millimeter. Number five, keeping all factory sensors and catalytic converter with the modified exhaust header to fit the EP3 chassis. Uh, that's one uh, route. The other route would be K20A EP3 CTR route. If I was going to purchase a complete CTR swap from Japan or UK, will I be able to pass California emissions tests? I know this is a gray area and have found mixed answers on K20 and hybrid tech forums regarding the swap. Any knowledge from you will be greatly appreciated. Thank you in advance, Ben. All right, so I'm not an expert on carb 
regulations, but... I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. If you did a um, K24 JDM with a 6-speed TSX transmission, and there's no need to do the TSX transmission. You could do the your, keep your 5-speed in there. Um, the only reason I would do the 6-speed TSX transmission would be for the slightly better uh, uh, cruising on the freeway. Uh, otherwise, I, I wouldn't bother. Um, I would just leave the EP3. And he says, uh, utilize my EP3 wire harness to repin it for reverse lockout. Yeah, you could do that and use it EP3 ECU, but I don't think that's going to work for you very well. Uh, the next thing is purchasing a TSX ECU for manual transmission with matching key, immobilizer, and key. The TSX thing is an interesting solution, but you're going to open up a can of worms because not only do you have to use the uh, matching key and immobilizer, but you're also going to have, have to add an accelerator pedal position sensor. You're going to have to figure out a throttle cable in order to operate that. It'll require something custom made. Uh, then also you're going to have to add in the, uh, accelerator, the electronic throttle control module. Okay, so that's a bunch more wiring. So I don't suggest the TSX thing, although that, that is a solution, I, I, I don't suggest that. But along the same um, route, I think a much easier solution would be actually to just get an RSX Type S swap and throw it in. So you can do a, a two, three, or four RSX uh, engine and ECU and uh, wiring harness, and that would be, well, that would be legal. Uh, they would just have RSX emissions. So you'd wind up with the RS, you'd also need the RSX header and catalytic converter, but um, you're not opening up a big can of worms by doing this. And then actually you could use your stock EP3 header and uh, catalytic converter for this, although it might cost you a couple of horsepower. But your next uh, solution here is uh, the K20A from uh, the Civic Type R. If you got that motor, you could probably run it with the RSX Type S ECU and be carb legal. You want to go talk to your smog guy about this, but I don't see any reason why you couldn't use that engine as a stock replacement because it doesn't really, a K20A is like a Japanese replacement motor. So if it's got three lobe VTEC on both sides, basically would be the equivalent of a um, replacement engine for your EP3, a JDM replacement engine. And the RSX ECU, is legal for carb, you know, to pass carb. Uh, you're not going to get maximum horsepower out of it, but uh, the engine will run fine. This should be totally legal uh, with California emissions. So uh, you might look into that. I think that might be your, your best bet. Plus, you could use your stock five-speed transmission if you wanted to. That would be fine as well. I don't think it's that gray of an area. Again, go talk to a smog, a smog shop and tell them, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the RSX Type S CCU from my year or newer. And I'm going to, which again, if it's a California computer, it should be legal. And then I'm going to, because basically what the law says is you need to have all the emissions controls devices from the RSX, which EP3 already has those things. It already has a, a, a you know, vent shut valve, fuel tank pressure sensor, all those little devices that, that the RSX CCU is looking for. So it shouldn't cause an issue um, with CARB using that ECU. That should be, I think, the direction you should be heading for. So uh, why, don't you try, why don't you try and, and talk to somebody and see if uh, that's not a, a better, maybe less painful solution. Uh, one more thing, uh, the camshaft, the pitted camshaft. You can just go to uh, any CRV and pull that camshaft out uh, as long as it's not pitted, you can replace it in your EP3 and it, and it should fix your problem. So if you're looking to probably buy some more time, why don't you just go to a junkyard, look through a few CRVs, see if the camshaft's in, in good shape, and go ahead and take that out and install it in your car. The car will run fine, the car will pass emissions, and it should buy some time in order to figure out what your long-term solution would be. Okay, this next question is from Greg, and uh, he's got a question about... Uh, automatic transmission swap. So, hi, I did a swap in a 2005 Civic LX automatic trans with a 2006 RSX base auto also. It looks like the CU101 plugs are the same. I'm looking for ECU connectors pinout for both cars. 
and if you know which wire from which connector to move around. Any help would be appreciated. Well, Automax are not something I've messed around with yet, um, but uh, I did just a quick little uh, research. I looked at some of the pins, and one thing I did notice is on the Civic, uh, there's only four plugs that go to the ECU. On the RSX, there's actually five plugs. So not only are you gonna have to maybe move some pins around, you're also gonna ha have to add a whole new plug. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the C101 pinouts as well as the E-plug pinouts. Uh, the A, B, and C plugs are on both harnesses. So those, uh, since you're using the RSX harness, I'm assuming, uh, you're just gonna be able to use that with your, um, with your RSX ECU. Uh, but there is a D plug that's lacking on your Civic and you're gonna need to add that. So I'm gonna give you the pinouts for that as well. It looks like a lot of that may have to do with the sport shift, which is present on the, uh, RSX, but not on your car. And by the way, uh, in order to use a sport shift, you're gonna wind up having to get a, a, a shifter mechanism from the RSX as well. Uh, bolts in the same way, by the way, uh, as it does on your car. So anyway, um, here are the C101 positions. Uh, this is basically a still image of it. So uh, you can uh, do a screen capture, print it out so you have the information. Next, I'm gonna show you the E-plugs to make sure that they're the same and see what you might have to switch around on those. And uh, this last still image is from the D plug. Now you're gonna need to do a little research uh, and find out where all these wires go to. Again, like I said, I think the majority of them actually go back to the shifter mechanism itself. By the way, I think there's a sub harness that goes basically from the ECU down to the shifter and to the fuse box. So you might just pull that whole section of harness out of the uh, out of your RSX uh, that might make life a little bit easier. To find the wiring diagrams for this particular uh, plug, what you would have to do is you'd have to get uh, an ETM from Honda for the RSX. I don't have one, unfortunately, or I'd help you out. Uh, but you can also download the system's wiring diagrams from Honda's website. You can get to that by going to Helm Inc. H E L M I N C. Uh, there is a uh, link there to go to uh, techinfo.honda.com, uh, which will allow you to uh, set up a login. And uh, from there, you can uh, actually access the, the wiring diagrams for you know, almost any manual from Honda, uh, including all the stuff from the new cars. I think it's uh, 25 bucks for a day of access, uh, so you can go on there and, and download PDFs of the individual you know, uh, components and see where everything goes. I hope this helps you out. Um, that is uh, kind of a big job, and interestingly, I want to start doing some uh, engine swaps for the, um, uh, for the automatic transmission RSX, so I am going to have to do this research here fairly soon. In fact, we're starting off with doing uh, K-Series CRV Auto into a first-gen CRV, and then from there, I'll expand into uh, all, the, uh, all the others. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on to the next question here. This has to do with K24 oil consumption. Jonathan Williams writes, can a loose valve cause oil burn on a K24? That's not typically what a loose valve does. A loose valve usually doesn't open completely and it will create a weak cylinder, weak. but not really, not really burn oil. Now, then there's also a tight valve, because he may be talking about it loose in the seat as opposed to loose on the rocker. A tight valve can cause exhaust gases to leak by, let's say on the, uh, on the, uh, um, exhaust side, you can get a burnt valve from that. You're burnt. But if you have a lot of oil getting into the, got a lot of blow by, you may be getting oil coming into the engine and getting burned, and that could in turn cause some carbon buildup and create a problem with the valve. So it's more likely that oil burn would cause a problem with the valve rather than the valve 
cause a problem with oil burn. The only time valves really are involved with oil burn is if you have bad valve guides. A bad valve guide usually manifests itself in when you're sitting there idling uh, for a while at a stoplight or, or in the morning when you're warming your car up and you first take off, if you get a big puff of oil smoke at that particular time, you may have uh, leaky valve guides. And uh, so, and that could also, I guess, mean a loose valve. So, uh, and valve guide, not totally sure what causes that. Um, it may just be mileage, uh, maybe some other um, overheating it or possibly revving it too high. Uh, but uh, valve guides are, uh, are really the only thing valve-wise that can cause, cause oil burn. Uh, but I've never heard of uh, uh, any other symptom of a valve, uh, you know, being too tight or too loose, uh, causing an oil burn problem. So interesting. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. By the way, uh, if you find something you disagree with, like this statement I just made here, if you're an experienced engine mechanic and you know of something else, by all means, put it down in the comments. We will, uh, uh, redress that if I see something, you know, like that. And, uh, I also have a lot of friends that are Honda mechanics, so I'll be happy to uh, talk to them as well and, and investigate further if, if, if you see something wrong with what I've said. Uh, but also, if you have questions, you can reach us at askvtechacademy at gmail.com. Uh, just drop us a line with your question and we'll stick it in the stack. And as soon as we can get to it, we will. Anyway, guys, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Please, if you like what you saw, think about liking and subscribing. Subscribing is actually how YouTube determines whether or not we're doing a good job and brings us to other people. So please, if you like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and then the bell so you get notifications. Anyway, thank you very much for clicking on us and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.